Welcome back, Zero K fans! Natalie is a done. This is Shadow Fury 3 your host, and the last match for tonight is going to be Kshatra versus Flipstep on Zed. I never actually caught, thought about that. Yeah, I guess it is a Zed. Yeah, it's a Zed. Okay. There's going to be gun trips from Flipstep and jump boss from Kshatra. Flipstep going for it looks like a blasting rush. It was mentioned before it was Sprung vs. Flipstep last game was slightly influenced by Blast Wings, but apparently Blast Wing rushing is back. Now it's a thing again. And this is where Well, we'll see how it goes. Chat Trevor going for Pyros, which does do a pretty good job since they can burn out, but still, Blast Wings are scary as always. And the commander pretty hard. And the commander about to die. This is one more blast wing. Flipstep, why are they not building the blast wing? Flipstep has stopped building anything. Ah, I forgot to put the fact on repeat. Yeah, okay, well, if you're wondering, they're wondering, what did I do? What did I do wrong? Is, well, you didn't build the blast wing. That would, that would be kind of how. That'd be one thing I'd recommend. Build units. Although it looks like... Ooh, yeah, tough choice. Do you want to hit the worker or do you want to hit the commander? I'd hit the commander, personally. At this, at this stage in the game, Shatra only has 7.4 metal. Killing the commander is half their economy, and... Ooh, doesn't quite manage to do that. So close. Although it looks like... Why choose? Why not do both? And the answer is because Shatra has already apparently got... No, not yet. Ooh. Yeah, see... If there's one thing I'd say, it's put the factory on repeat build flip or flip step. I mean, seriously. Now says a lot of people don't do that. Like if you want to be pushing something forever, put it on repeat queue. Like, I don't know, I think what you should have done is make sure the blasting rush actually worked. At this point, let's see, you're playing a battle count. They're wondering if they wanted to, they should have calm rushed first, or calm drop first. And, hmm. Well, it looks like that's what they're going to do. I, yeah, I don't know. They are pretty behind economically. I don't think I would have calm dropped. I think I would have actually just gone for setting this up. Setting up the economy and then move from there. Because Flips is going to take forever to get this set up. With them between the morphing and the lack they have no metal. And it's just. They're trying to set up so long. Kshatra right now, surprisingly, is not building anything. Why are they not building anything? I don't know. What are they waiting for? Are they building up metal? Not really. Pyro is up, and the Pyro is going to trade. Well, not quite trade. It's going to beat that Lotus. Thankfully, the defender was up, but still, Flipstep right now is only ahead because Kshatria, is not, Kshatria isn't building anything. Yeah, at this point, I just recommended either try to go for a second blast wing attack once you kind of find a way of opening it up, or just don't don't bother. Just try to go back to normal. And raids are coming from Kshatra, because Kshatra knows this is coming. And besides, even if they didn't, that's still a wise move. At least if they know the gunship is being built. And they know that this is being built. And it looks like... Oh, no, other way around. Calm nap is happening. Kshatra's commander being pulled back. What's this saying? Oh, get your moves. Yeah, that must have been a mistake. Oh, probably a rally point mistake. So yeah, flipstep getting dropped. Well, I mean, if you're going to go for a drop, then I guess the best thing to do is to keep morphing. Like, seriously. Just keep morphing. Never stop morphing the commander. That's all you have. Oh, I see. Okay, why are they dropping forward like this? No, this is bot pathable. The commander can actually walk through this. Not sure where the justification was for doing a drop there. Like, if you're going to drop into the main base, sure, but... Why did you drop that far ahead? You can walk. Hmm. 
Yeah, I don't agree with a lot of the play here. Kshatra, in a bit of a defensive position, if Flipstep just went purely economic, just went for normal play, and they kind of are. If they just went for pure normal play, they'd probably be fine. Kshatra has a few expansions here and there, but... They're not doing much, much with it yet. I don't know. Flipstep getting that economy up. Getting some cranes up to try to set up... Yeah, that's good. Definitely something you want. But at this point, I'm just not sure what... I don't think Flipstep knows what they're trying to do. They're... They're just second-guessing themselves. If they had dropped into the main base, they probably would have been okay. Although, they mentioned in chat they were worried about there being LLTs there. Fair enough. But... The Vindicator would be able to scout that out for you. Like, you probably could go in and out without losing it in the Commander. You saw, that there, oh, there are LLTs, or, oh, there aren't LLTs. Oh, it's probably pointing out that Nats actually tank defender shots, and they do, 350. They will, they will tank a couple defender shots. See, now the Vindicator's heavily damaged, it... It wouldn't survive getting into anything, but yeah, with all this anti-air... Like, if Flipstep just went for it, they probably would be able to tear this apart. What do they have on this commander? Heat Ray? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Heat Ray commander coming into a place like this? Everything's over. Like, Shatra would lose their entire main base if that came up. The Pyro jumping into it, too. But yeah, like I said, I just don't understand why Flipstep is being so timid about it. And especially, okay, now they're getting that construction up. Why? I was about to say, why aren't they building more in their... Gunship factory. But yeah, I'd say the biggest thing is if you're gonna go for the transport, do the comm drop. Like, go for it. If you need to use a couple gnats to scout out to figure out if you can, but yeah, then go for it. But I think the biggest thing was the Blastwing not being on repeat build. If the Blastwing was on repeat build, this game would be over. Flipstep would have taken it. But yeah, right now, Flipstep, like, they, they had the Heat Ray Calm, they had the transport set up, they, they have everything set up for a drop, they're just not going for it, and that's... They've invested so much into it without pay, having any payoff. Like, they're basically having to make up for the fact that their investment has been wasted. And it's not doing them any good. Why is this crane idle? Okay. But also, yeah, like, that's the thing. That was something you gotta ask yourself, look at your base. Why is that idle? What the heck? Or if you, of course, like on keeping an eye on that. Yeah, Flipstep... Man, they have the center, but this isn't a normal game. I mean, for one thing, bots kind of mess it up because they get through this back path. But for another thing, it's just not been normal at all. Like, between the, jo the drops, the gunship play... I mean, there's AR coming in pretty soon, but yeah, it's just, this is not normal. And... Harassment? Okay, I guess that's one thing you can do with the Vindicator. Can harass pretty well. But Shaktra's only just now started using all of their metal. Lipstick still excessing. Mostly because the caretaker keeps insisting on reclaiming despite the excess. And these cranes are idle. Should be assisting that factory. If they were assisting that factory, it would be perfect. Be fine. And down goes the Vindicator after getting rid of a couple metal extractors and some wind generators. Yeah, not much Flipstep has here to deal with anything. This looks like it's going to be game. Flipstep going to level 2 in their commander, but that's... That's still a game. Yeah, Flipstep's commander going down. That's where all their investment was. They just, they invested... I think that's the biggest thing. They, it's not as much whether or not you should have gone for the comm drop. It's that you went for the comm drop and then stopped. Or you, you invested in comm drop and then didn't go for it. That was the problem. The problem wasn't that you should or shouldn't have done the comm drop, is that you were doing a comm drop, and then you stopped. Like, you're going for cheese. When you're going for cheese, you gotta go for it, you gotta commit. If you don't commit, then it's not gonna work. Like, you can avoid committing that much when you're doing normal defensive, like normal, fairly defensive play, normal economic play. 
Not when you're doing hyper-aggressive cheese play. When you're doing cheese play, you have to commit. You absolutely have to commit. Otherwise, your opponent is investing. Everything they invest becomes useful. And you're essentially a few hundred, if not thousand metal down because they you lost that. And they've indicated that's 500 metal. On top of the commander costing another a thousand metal. That's 1500 metal. Or not quite 1500, but at least 1300 metal. That was basically just lost. Oh yeah, and minimum win, in case you're wondering, is 0.9, actually. So pure wind gen works fine in this map. Or I should say, at the top area, it's 0.9. This is 0.9 to 2.5. If you were to build wind generators, lower sections is 0 0.2. Well, then a 0.1. But most of the top area, it's 0.9. Basically, the entire top area is 0.9. So it's fairly windy. Like, 0.9 is... Pretty much the point, I mean, point 0.6 or point 0.5 is the point where you can basically go entirely for wind gen and not worry about solars. Point 0.9 is the point where you never build solars. You only build solars if you're in an area that you're pretty sure is going to get hit hard repeatedly. And you want to have the tank. Otherwise, wind generators are just far more cost effective. They're at least as cost effective as solars, if not more. But yeah, that game... That was an odd game, but really it just came down to a lack of commitment from Rymark to sorry, from Flipstep to their own strategy. Rymark wasn't playing, so it's not relevant what they thought. But yeah, it was really a lack of commitment to the comm drop. They were going for a comm drop, and they didn't go for the comm drop. Like I said, if you want to play if you want to be defensive and hedge and make sure you got everything right before you go, just don't cheese. If you're gonna go for cheese. Go for it. Just go for it. You're you're setting up an all or nothing situation regardless. So just go for it. If your opponent has accounted for it, well then that's it. If your opponent hasn't accounted for it, then you win. But it's all in. It's an all in situation. It's important to realize that. <laughs> anyway, that is going to be it for me today. I hope you enjoyed that. The slightly longer stream because of, well, both technical problems that happened, but more so because I wasn't able to catch throughout the week. Hope you enjoyed that. Interesting set of games. Mostly weird games. Mostly games that were just... Like, man. Blastwing, or Control by Blastwing, or... Bizarre Gunship Stars. I want to think of every, every game pretty much had either Gunship Star or Gunship as a main, main thing. There might have been maybe one game that was ground-focused. I think the Kshatra Rymark game on Trojan Hills is fairly ground focused. That was relatively normal. But everything else was just strange in some way. I don't know, Sprung and Snuggle Base was normal too. Yeah, that was just Amphib. That was just Economy. Okay, so a couple normal games and a lot of weird ones. Hope you enjoyed that. Thanks for watching, and have a good night, everyone.